morning guys and welcome to the month of June. I am super excited for summer to begin. For this video, I decided to do this kind of on a whim. I was making my bullet journal last night and drawing out all of, all of my plans for June and I realized that a lot of you guys actually have been asking me to do a video on time management, how I plan out my day, how I plan out my month, how I manage all my deadlines and um, projects that I have to work on. And also in my last vlog, I gave you guys a quick brief sneak peek at my bullet journal and so many of you responded so positively to it and wanted to see more. So thank you all for um, your feedback and your comments. Um, so yeah, I've decided to just kind of document and explain how I bullet journal and basically organize and plan um, all of my artist projects and deadlines. Before I begin, I just wanted to thank two people. I wanted to thank um, one of my awesome collectors, Brian, for sending me these James Jean notebooks. I mean, how gorgeous is this? It features his beautiful artwork and also it's really lightweight and paperback and really easy to travel with. And also I wanted to thank my dear friend Lena Danya who got me addicted to bullet journaling and now we're bullet, bullet journal sisters. So yeah, I'm gonna link her channel below if for some reason you don't know who she is. But yeah, she is awesome and she got me hooked on this. And hopefully after watching this video, you guys will be fellow bullet journalers as well. So for bullet journals, I really recommend a dotted or gridded notebook instead of a regular line notebook just because it serves a, as a better guideline for drawing squares, charts, graphs, um, and also writing in horizontal lines. Um, and also, I'm not going to give an extensive tutorial on how to bullet journal. It really varies from person to person and there's so much reading uh, and tutorials about it out there. So I'm going to be linking in the description the official bullet journal guide from the man who created it and I think he will do a way more comprehensive job at explaining the general philosophy of bullet journaling for those of you who've never been exposed to bullet journaling before. Um, but for this video, I'm just going to keep it simple and give you guys my own way of bullet journaling. I've actually simplified and stripped down the process a lot because I am a pretty minimal person. Um, so yeah. This video will mostly entail how I bullet journal my own schedule um, as a self-employed artist to fit my particular set of needs. And I don't do a lot of the um, various habits that a lot of other bullet journalers do. For me, it's basically just a really fancy to-do list and a way to track all of my deadlines. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start off each bu bullet journal month with just <laughs> trying my best to letter um, the month's name in as a neat and eye-catching way as possible. I'm really sorry for those of you who are really good at calligraphy out there. You're probably cringing at my very novice lettering skills. But yeah, um, I also like to lay out an actual kind of traditional physical calendar layout, meaning you know the days of the week on the horizontal axis and then um, the days of the month in neat rows. I like doing that rather than just doing like, let's say a straight column um, down of all the days of the month. Having it in the traditional calendar layout helps me better visualize both my future far away deadlines and also my near future upcoming deadlines. So this month I have decided to make two calendars. The calendar that I'm working on right now is going to be my painting deadlines calendar. I just figured that instead of cramming all of my deadlines into one, I will give myself some room to breathe and also just keep everything more clean and organized. So this calendar I'm working on is purely for my painting deadlines. Underneath my physical calendar, I'm just going to have a little section titled Paintings to Finish and here is where I draw out little thumbnails of every painting that I have planned over the course of the month. And of course, as new paintings and projects come up, I can feel free to add to this section. Um, these are not perfectly measured ratios, but I try to keep them um, Easily, easily understandable in terms of the size in relation to each other. So for example, the 16 by 20 painting will be the biggest rectangle and then the 11 by 14 will be slightly smaller than that. And then the 9 by 12 will be slightly smaller than that. And the 8 by 10 will be slightly smaller than the 9 by 12 and so forth. And um, also as I make progress on each painting, for example, as I complete each layer, I'm just going to use a pink highlighter to fill up the painting. And that way it also keeps 
track of how much progress I'm making on each painting because I do like to work on several paintings simultaneously. Ideally, by the end of the month, I am aiming to have all the rectangles completely filled up with my pink highlighter. I also make sure to physically block off the days of the month in which I am not available to work on paintings. So I just basically use a diagonal line and fill up the squares that correspond to the days of the month in which I'm going to be traveling or out of town or have to host guests or have any other obligations that will hinder me from getting any work done. And that way it also helps me visualize just how much time I have to um, work on the paintings that I need to finish. And lastly, for this calendar, the most important thing I'm going to do is use a red or other bold colored uh, marker to outline the days in which I need to finish each painting by. So this helps kind of alert me and draws my eyes immediately to the important deadline. So if I'm a few days um, away from a deadline and I haven't made progress on a certain piece yet, then I know to kick it into high gear and really prioritize that. Um, I also like to just give my paintings little nicknames. I don't really make official names for the pieces until after they're finished, but just little nicknames to kind of denote and um, be able to distinguish each painting. Oops, almost forgot. Um, let's just quickly label this calendar painting calendar. So the second calendar I'm going to be using for every other deadline aside from painting. So that could include video deadlines, um, Patreon deadlines, as well as important events um, even unrelated to art that I need to keep track of like paying taxes, uh, vet appointments, things like that. And just a quick side note, um, I, I know not everyone needs to do this, but I actually love to sync up this handwritten calendar with my iPhone's calendar or my Google calendar. Um, for me, it's really important to get daily reminders um, the day of of important events just in case I forget. And similar to the previous painting calendar, I'm just going to use a colorful attention grabbing marker to highlight all of the days that contain important deadlines. And um, because I don't want to compete with the brilliant blood red marker of the first calendar, I'm just going to use my trusty pink highlighter. And underneath this calendar, I'm just going to list out some video ideas I have for the month of June. And this area is kind of like a free brainstorming place. I don't put too much pressure on myself to actually make every single video that I list out here. And whenever a new idea pops into my head, I'm just going to jot it down in this section. Okay, and now for probably what is my favorite part of bullet journaling, which is the habit tracker. So the habit tracker is a great way for me to not only build new habits that I think are beneficial, but also to keep track of how often I um, indulge in bad habits that I want to slowly get rid of. So of course you can personalize this however you want, but for me, I like to write down habits um, about regarding my career and my work schedule, but also habits regarding my personal life, like making sure I go to the gym, making sure I wake up early and get a good night's sleep. So um, what I do for this is I just list the habits on the left column and then um, across the bullet journal, I list all the days of the month. And if I've completed a habit um, that day, I block it off with a colorful marker. For simplicity's sake, I'm not going to show you guys every single habit that I'm trying to track. Also because some of them I'm quite embarrassed by because they're personal. But um, basically, I end up filling up this entire um, two-page span um, almost quite fully. Um, I can show you guys my completed habit tracker for May. So as you can tell from May, I had quite a complicated system going on. Um, I had different colors of uh, squares to denote different types of habits. So like personal, um, health, um, business, art. So yeah, it gets pretty complicated, but once it's done, it's a really great way to look back on the month and see what progress you have made. And now this is the last part, and this is the kind of really um, lighthearted daily logs portion. Basically, every day I write out a to-do list of all the goals I want to complete by that day. And this is a great 
way to kind of tie everything in because I can take a look at my overall monthly deadlines and goals and you know put them onto my daily logs or if I have kind of more minute um, small things that I have to do every day um, I can write it down so I don't forget them over the course of the day. I'm also prone to writing down the next day's daily log um, on the day before so that um, if I have things that I know that I didn't finish today, I know to push them to tomorrow. Or if I come up with um, a reminder in my brain to do something by the next day, I jot it down before I forget. And again, like I don't put <clears throat> I don't put too much pressure on myself to finish every single task that I list because I think that's like being really hard on yourself. And I'm always overly ambitious, so I tend to write down um, very big stretch goals and I don't give myself a hard time if I don't finish them. As long as I finish everything by their ultimate deadlines on those two overall monthly calendars, um, that is good with me. So yeah, this is a really great way to track your daily progress. And for me, it's really rewarding to be able to check off every single task or, you know, just to see like a really complete uh, bulleted list. I also um, use the same pink marker to denote a finished task. So if, if I'm done with something, I will just color in that bullet point square with pink. And if I can't finish something and I need to move it to the next day, I just draw a little arrow to denote that I need to migrate it to tomorrow. And that pretty much sums up how I bullet journal. Um, every month I notice that my style evolves and I cater this bullet journal to fit my needs better and better. So don't worry if you're just starting out and your first month is kind of awkward. It's normal. Well, that was it. Um, hopefully that wasn't too difficult to understand and I hope I explained myself clearly. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. You guys are the best and have a great month of June and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!